From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland and this is The Leader. They're becoming so common when they're threatened or actually happening that many Londoners just factor in that there'll be some kind of strike hitting their commute during the year. Those that can will work from home. Those that can't often have a plan B strategy already tried and tested to get them into work. That doesn't mean rail strikes aren't disruptive. Roads become clogged, not just the motorways, but those suburban choke points too. Not great for the school run, particularly as with this year, when planned action comes at the same time as students are sitting exams. So it's not just the commuters. Actually, trains to Glastonbury and the Goodwood Festival of Speed were cancelled even as negotiations continued. The AA is recommending you give those areas a wide berth if you're not going to the events. None of this is new, but as Treasury Chief Secretary Simon Clark told BBC Breakfast, there just doesn't seem to be a way to make a breakthrough that will end it all. It's fair to say that they are resolvable, and we all want to see a good and fair outcome here for rail workers, uh, fair payers and passengers uh, alike. We, 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 we are really determined to see that happen. I, I just think it's also important to be realistic that uh, this is a difficult uh, negotiation. So why are the negotiations so hard and is there a solution? Or are we doomed to see this over and over again? With me is a transport journalist and author of British Rail, A New History, Christian Woolmer, a man who's covered many a strike. Christian, I know it's all very complicated, but in the simplest terms, can you explain what's going on? Well, essentially, I suppose it's a breakdown in communication and in the structures that exist to sort it out. So uh, the unions are asking for certain commitments like uh, not having compulsory redundancies. They're asking for a pay rise, not a, not so much on the underground, but on the national rails. They're asking for basically discussions over a whole range of trade union matters. And uh, there is a kind of impasse because Uh, In terms of the National Railway, uh, the government is saying, well, it's nothing to do with us. And the rail uh, delivery group, which represents train companies, are saying, well, negotiate with us. But they can't really negotiate because it's the government that's got the purse strings. And the same applies to uh, the underground, where um, TFL is, is really piggy in the middle, because on the one hand, you've got the unions making uh, certain demands and asking for uh, no redundancies and so on and no changes to their terms and conditions. And uh, on the other, you've got the government saying, uh, well, to TfL, you can only have a certain amount of money. Um, We're not going to give you any extra money. So therefore, TfL cannot kind of make any reasonable offer to the unions because they're dependent on government. So there is a whole fundamental dishonesty about this, that really this is a battle between government and unions and TfL, Network Rail, the train operators are caught in the middle of it. So if they are stuck in the middle, TfL, is there anything they can do? Is there any wriggle room? Is there anything they can offer? Is there any hope of negotiation at all? Because we keep having these issues come up again and again. How, how can they resolve it? Uh, well, that's the problem. And there is also the added Uh, difficulty that I think there is some imperative on both sides to want some action. So the trade unions, particularly the RMT, uh, because ASLEF is not really involved in this, you have to remember the train drivers are not involved, it's the RMT who represent most of other workers uh, on the underground and the railway. They are a pretty militant bunch. They are split uh, on their executive between the militants and uh, the more moderates and uh, the moderates are scared of kind of uh, what the militants will do if they are too emollient so uh, they uh, in a way um, the hardliners want to see uh, strike action it shows that you know they're kind of showing their muscle they're showing their strength they like the idea of confrontation uh, and the moderates don't, but they sometimes are in a minority. And on the other hand, you've also got the government, which has so many kind of negative uh, aspects on its plate at the moment that it's quite happy to see a battle with the unions. They can paint them as terrible trots and, uh, you know, nasty militants. 
and uh, it takes uh, people's minds off Partygate, off the protocol, off relations with Europe, off uh, the fact that the national GDP is declining and so on. So uh, the trouble is there's something in it for both sides. Yeah, and in the middle of that, you've got a Labour mayor, Labour course a party that, that that's mostly friendly with the unions there but you've written in the evening standard today that, that steve khan is finding this incredibly frustrating what's what, what are his issues well i mean you know yes he he has to face both ways in a way because you know he does uh want to retain union support uh he doesn't want to, to aid it even though the rmt is not incidentally a um uh, affiliated to the Labour Party, unlike most unions, it, it left the Labour Party some years ago and is associated with some far left socialist party. Um, but Aslef is uh, uh, still affiliated to uh, Labour. But so he has to kind of try to appease them. But he also has to negotiate with Grant Shapps and uh, uh, other ministers uh, to try and get a, a good deal for TfL. We all know that, you know, the pandemic kind of ruined TfL's finances. It's more dependent on a government subsidy than ever before. And yet, even before the pandemic, the government was trying to cut uh, the subsidy, in fact, reduce it to virtually nothing, which is unheard of in any city in the world, that the public transport is not subsidised. But that's what uh, the government wanted to do. Um, and uh, so, therefore... Sadiq Khan is in a, a very difficult place. And, and meanwhile, oddly enough, we have this wonderful new railway, which shows um, exactly why we need public transport. Uh, you know, we've got the Elizabeth line. People are flocking to go on it. They absolutely love it. And they say, oh, we want more of this. Um, and yet, of course, we're not going to get more of this if uh, it all descends into kind of nasty uh, battles over uh, terms and conditions and redundancies and whatever. Let's go to the ads. And while they're on, why not give the leader a rate and follow on your podcast provider? We'll be back with more from Christian after the break, including looking at whether there'll be more strikes to come. You've written in the, the piece for the standard today that we haven't seen anything like this since 1982. What's the same and what's different there, Christian? Uh, well, what, what's uh, uh, different, of course, is that it's actually much more difficult to go on strike. And so in a way, you'd think, oh, well, all this legislation that's been brought in ever since the days of Mrs. Thatcher um, would kind of make it much more, uh, less, much less likely that we would see strikes like this. But in fact, the very complexity of the legislation, you have to have a ballot, you have to kind of go through all sorts of hoops. And in the old days, you do that after negotiations broke down. Because you'd say, OK, you know, this is the last straw. We're going to go on strike. Everybody out. But now you have to do that in advance. You have to kind of basically stack up your side of the, uh, of the armory uh, with the strike weapon, which you can then use instantly uh, before even negotiations start. Because uh, the legislative hoops you have to go through are so complex that you can't actually wait for negotiations to break down. So in a way that all that trade union legislation has made things worse and made it more likely that uh, unions, particularly relatively militant unions like the RMT, will ballot first and talk later. And it, so it now seems that, you know, without any serious talks having taken place, we're going to get all this action without the issues ever really having been properly kind of thrashed out. And, and regardless of what side you take on the issues, for commuters in London, I mean, we're looking at a really miserable week, aren't we? Uh, I'm afraid, look, uh, really, if you can work from home, do. But of course, lots of people can't work from home. You know, if you work in a shop, if you uh, work in a factory, if you, uh, you know, you're cleaning the streets, whatever, you can't. And, uh, you know, these people still have to get to work. And yes, I mean, in particular, on the on the strike days, there will be about a quarter of services operating, something like that. But they're all going to stop at 6.30. So, um, you know, and that's 6.30, not when the train leaves, but 6.30 when the train arrives. So uh, essentially, you'll have to leave work at half past five, five o'clock to have any chance of getting home. And if you miss that last train... You know, you're, you're going to have to walk or, or take a taxi or whatever. So 
uh, you know, it's going to be really rough, rougher than at any time, as I suggested, since 1982. Is this going to be the end of it, though, Christian? Can they come to some kind of conclusion, or are we going to see more of this? Is it going to get more regular? Can, can, is there any happy news here at all? I'm afraid, David, that I can't really suggest any uh, easy way out of this. I, you know, I think we are heading for that old cliche, a summer of discontent, and it, it there does uh, seem that you know unless. Uh, suddenly, uh, Grant Shapps and Boris Johnson become, uh, you know, soften their line, or uh, the RMT suddenly all become totally sensible. Um, we're going to see this clash going on, uh, uh, you know, all summer and possibly well into uh, colder seasons. And that's the leader. You can read more from Christian Wilmer at standard.co.uk, where you'll also find our live blog giving you up-to-the-minute information on the rail and tube strikes. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm. <laughs>